Now, with mental preparedness, we're talking about overall strategies which allow someone to be sort of psychologically well prepared for participation and competition. So we're really looking at what I would refer to as big picture strategies. And in many of these, by the way, we're going to go into much more detail in other tutorials. So this is kind of big picture. The first one that would help someone be mentally prepared for performance is a super simple one, is that the individual or the team will follow routines. And you'll be able to relate to this because these routines can be quite general. You know, they could be to to do with when you eat in relation to competition they could be to do with how you warm up as a team we follow routines and it allows this kind of psychological preparedness into performance I mean I've had numerous occasions I've, I've been involved with a lot of football seniors football I've had numerous occasions for example where you'll get to an away fixture late and you can't do a proper warm you can't go through your proper team talk and it can really affect your sort of level of mental prep when you go out onto the pitch ready to prepare ready to, ready to perform now bear in mind that this could be pre-competition, these routines. They could be pre-competition, but they could also be post-competition. An example, following a cool down, having a, a sort of a debrief coaches talk after performance, these sorts of things. Secondly, and it's a really interesting one to address, is that we think that perspective is a really important aspect of psychological preparedness for sport. And what we mean by this is that we place sport in context. So place in context. Now, I am imagine that some of you are real avid sports people. So if I was to say to you, you know, it's only sport, it's just a game. You probably think, well, hang on to me, it's a lot more than that. I think what we're trying to say is it's not the whole of life, right? Sport is, a, is an aspect of life. It's something we can enjoy and thrive in and enjoy competition. But it's not the only thing. And there are other things. And therefore, having that perspective is useful in order to be well psychologically prepared and adjusted now this one's a fascinating one you will hear me talk about this quite a lot because it's something that as a coach and as a sort of a sports scientist i really think is important is what we call near transfer okay near transfer or, or game simulation I'll, I'll put it in here for you it's what we call simulation training and what I mean by this is that not always, but as much as possible, training how one is going to compete can be really, really positive for a person's sort of psychological preparedness, okay? If we train effectively how we compete, it, it's likely that we'll compete well. Now, that doesn't mean we take risks like we're, we might do in competition. We might be more prone to injury because we're flying into tackles or whatever it is. But I'm going to say like this, practice like the competition or i'll put it like this practice like the match if you're not a match player and you do races or you're doing uh, some kind of events or some kind of performances fine but you know what i mean practice like the match we want to create our training environment to be really really rigorous as a result of that again something i'm going to touch on here and we'll go into much more detail in other tutorials is the notion of visualization visualization is a key a uh, tool in the arsenal of a sports of a sports person in terms of their good preparation. Now, visualization really comes in two formats. There, there are more subtleties and, and nuances to this, but one of them is imagery. Okay, now imagery can be really just about anything. It can be relaxation based. It can be performance based, but it can also uh, we can also re refer to mental rehearsal. Now, mental rehearsal is specific. By the way, that's an, that's an R. So for some reason, I do these little flicks on my, my first R sometimes. But mental rehearsal is performance-based. We're actually visualizing through performance, going through the whole... Um, we, we, we might visualize, for example, a whole innings in cricket or, or visualize a whole over we're going to bowl in cricket. Or we might visualize, for example, I know, let, let me choose rugby, that, that striking that first scrum if I'm a front row or whatever it happens to be, mental rehearsal. And the point I want to make about visualization is something very, very interesting to reflect on which is that imagined reality and actual reality are the same to our subconscious mind so just think about that a second if we mentally rehearse our performance and it's successful and positive and affirming and we deal we cope with stress and difficulty and competition your subconscious will believe that to be real and that can develop all kinds of positive feelings so it's something for you to seriously consider if it's not something you currently do um Again, we're going to talk about this in much more detail in other contexts, but goal setting is really important as a psychological preparedness. Okay, now goal setting. Now, of course, we know we're going to look at this, this, um, the SMART principle. So just to remind you what that is, goals should be specific. They should be, let's see if I'm going to have enough space for this. They should be measurable. They should be achievable. 
they should be relevant let me do that ah they're relevant and just about enough space goals should also be time bound okay so i'm not going to go any further than that in this particular tutorial because we are going to go into that in a lot more detail elsewhere but goal setting is got to be smart and it's got to follow that protocol two further things from me before we finish thung number one thung number one or penultimate thing is <clears throat> performers should be really encouraged to undertake a process of what we describe as problem solving and that is what we would call what if scenarios what if scenarios so let's imagine i don't know let's imagine um what should we choose today let's imagine we're talking about a gymnast for example and it's a female gymnast and she's thinking about the asymmetrical bars and she she tries to in a practice she doesn't only visualize the positive but she visualizes how she'll react if something goes wrong maybe she falls from the bar maybe she misses a rotation how will she cope with that and develop that sort of what if scenarios and how she'll respond to those things that's going to be very very useful if those things do indeed come to pass and finally guys and i can't emphasize this one enough it's the, it comes back to perspective actually it's the idea of rational the idea of rational thinking and rational thinking again it's based on perspectives but it allows a performer to do the following things number one they might undertake what we call thought stopping again we'll look at this in more detail other at other times but if any kind of negative thoughts worry apprehension doubt we can literally go through the process of blocking that and we can also go through the process of what we call positive self-talk. Now, good examples of self-talk would be the use of a mantra or an aff affirming statement, which we repeat to one another. Uh, we repeat to ourselves, sorry, but just to confirm, guys, these are our big picture strategies to encourage good mental preparedness. Now, obviously, some of them are individual and based around the performer, but they can be elements of those that the coach also develops and certainly encourages with their athletes. Cheers.